out of the chair like, what? I got you. <laughs> the other way to do it is to also actually sit something really old next to something really modern. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and my husband Jack and I are taking a little coffee break and we wanted to invite you to come in and have a chat with us because today it's a little bit of a follow up to our last video which was things that we were getting rid of and things we'll never buy again and it really brought up the idea of some of the old stuff. Yeah. And we did one other video which really got people excited which was like stuff that's old stuff that's dating your house. And we've gotten a lot of comments on both of those. We wanted to do a follow up kind of to those two videos because we want to share with you how we use old stuff, what we use, and why you should definitely be using old stuff in your house to create something that's beautiful, epic, ties in perhaps your life story, yeah. it gives you texture and warmth. We're gonna go through all of that today. We're gonna give you practical ways that you can use these ideas to use maybe something, whether it's an heirloom or you love to go antiquing and mm. collect new items, you're gonna have so much inspiration after today's video. You're gonna be fully loaded up. I can't wait. I know, it's so exciting. Yes. The other exciting thing is, guys, we are coming so close to 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Like, I'm amazed. I mean, it's just amazing, 300,000, and we want you to be one of those. So if you have not yet, hit subscribe. Go down below and hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, and then at the end of this video, we want to know from you which item in your home now you are excited about. Yeah. That maybe you were like, eh, before, but after this, why and what and how about old stuff that you're like, yes, now I know what to do. Now I know what to do with Share that. that with us. Yeah, and, and we want to know what you also have and what you're struggling with. That's also really helpful to us so that we yes. know how, what content to make so that we can help you answer the things that you're struggling through. So yeah, make sure you do all that. Shall we jump in? Let's jump in. Okay. So let's start with the why. Let's start with the reason why you should use old stuff. I think there's a lot of reasons why. Number one, you may have something that you're sentimentally attached to. Mm. That is something that we completely understand. I think that a lot of times you have something that's been passed down through your family, something that you've bought and you have a really special attachment to. I think that those are the things a lot of times that we try to get out of our clients from the first meeting because we want to know what do you have that's really, really special to you so that we can try to work that into the design. And sometimes, a lot of times, when it's a sentimental piece like that, we actually make it the centerpiece of the entire design, especially if it works yeah. with where you're going and where you want your style to evolve into. So I think sentimental pieces can be amazing. As we mentioned in the last video, sometimes sentimental pieces can be a bit of a drag. It's maybe not something that you really like. It's okay to release these things that you don't yeah. love and let somebody else enjoy them. It's better than you hating on that thing. I just feel like that's just such a bad environment for your life and to be living with something that you just really don't like. So think about whether, I, I would really recommend looking through everything that you have and deciding those sentimental pieces, are they something that you really, really love? Are they something that you really, really cherish? And if you do, think about how you might be able to incorporate yeah. that into your house and we're gonna give you some tips and tricks as we go as well. <laughs> Can't wait to hear this. <laughs> Why? Because people ask this all the time and I hear you asking in consultations, and a lot of times they'll be like, no, there's nothing. And you're like, but what about that table? Oh, my great grandfather made it, but I'm fine with getting rid of it. And you're like, really? And I yeah. see you reinvent things with people and help them think about things in new ways. So I can't yeah. wait to hear like how you process this today. Yeah. So what are some other reasons why you should use? And I should, I feel like I should have started from the beginning. Old, like what does that <laughs> even mean, right? To me, something that is old, it shows wear, it shows mm. patina, it shows warmth, it shows time. And that's all, that's like literally almost all the reasons why you should use old stuff. It's because it's something you're attached to. It's something that does add a lot of warmth. It helps your space to feel unique and one of a kind. Yeah, that's true. You should definitely use old stuff if it brings you joy, something that you look at and you just, it, sometimes when you just see something, yeah, it just makes your heart do a flip flop. And you're just like, oh, it just brings you so much joy. 
These are all reasons why you should be using old stuff. I think old stuff can sometimes also save you money. Sometimes it costs a lot more. Depends on how old it is and <laughs> how much other much. people value it. Right. Right? You grew up in a very, very rural setting. <laughs> And yeah, your absolutely. mom loves primitive. She really does, loves primitive. Primitive style. She's like, she literally worked in a little country. We worked in a, yeah, she worked in a country store. We used to go up there all the time. Yeah. So I think that you kind of brought that to my style, which tends to be pretty like fierce and I'm, you know, high contrast and I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I'm the like kickboxing, weightlifting kind of like, just go after it really yeah, hard. Yeah. And then you sort of like balance that. So I think you can kind of see how we take into account our own personalities and how that kind of fleshes itself out in our home that I think you feel more comfortable, even just like the vase behind us, it's got a little bit of that sort of warmth and patina. Yeah. And then the one next to it that's like spiky, you can see. That's like us. Our personality. That is us right there. Yeah, so I think that's what's really fun about this is really discovering your own style. So as you think about what you want to put into your house, I would definitely think through um, furniture. I have to make a list. I'm so bad because I'm like, I get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> definitely think about your furniture. Definitely think about your accessories. Some of the other things that I like to include as well are art. Oh my gosh. I mean, oh yeah. Art is always better when it's old. That's always better. Right. I mean, it's go to a museum. It's that texture, it's that patina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so cool. I love to look on places like, when I have more money to spend, depending on if it's, I, we don't always get to shop on first dibs for us, but a lot of times our clients have a little bit more money. So if yeah. you, you have a little bit more money or you're looking for something really special and unique, first dibs and cherish are the perfect places to go shop. And then if you're looking for somewhere that maybe isn't quite so expensive and you're looking for a little bit more of a deal, I would look online at Etsy. And then in person, of course, go to, we go to state sales all the time. All the time, it's so much fun. We go to garage sales just always moseying up to a garage sale, you know. Yeah, and flea markets, yeah. anything like that. Yeah. But, oh. Antique malls, we go all the time to places like that, looking for those little unique items. Then I think that it's also fair to say that there's places like our house, which are really good, that give you items that look older, because you just don't want everything to look too sparkly and new. That sort of texture and warmth just really keeps your space feeling inviting and cozy. I also love garden accessories. As you guys know, you see that little <laughs> yeah. garden sphere all the time. I really like something that looks like it's actually been pulled yeah. out of the garden. So that's why I try to look at estate sales a lot of times because people are just trying to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that rugs, one of the biggest things you're talking about is that we're talking about using real patina. Yes. Like there's been a lot of stuff over the years that's fake looking, it's meant to look old or whatever, but it's that, I don't know, there's something about feeling it. Like when you yes. take off your socks, take off your shoes. And, I was like, where are you going with that? Which we're going to do right now. <laughs> I was like, we're not taking our socks and shoes the off. The world's ready for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Make some extra money. Um, <laughs> they've been asking. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? People pay to see women's feet. They don't pay to see yours. <laughs> they pay to cover mine up. We could buy a third house, second, paid, third, fourth house with your feet. I pay to cover your feet up. <laughs> like, oh, oh. But, <laughs> she did the other day. She's like, what the Come on. <laughs> like, that's what lotion's for, buddy. Lotion, Anyways, oils. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. We have so digressed. <laughs> yes, but there's something about when you do that and you feel that rug and it feels real. There's something about the art when it actually is it's real. It's artisanal. Yeah. And so you're able a lot of times to get something that's vintage that it's just they made things differently back then. So of course we have a lot of rugs that aren't vintage, but I think that you can, I think it's fair to have a goal of incorporating these things in and maybe you'll get something that has a vintage look when you're on a tight budget and then you know, eventually you have goals of what you want to add and, and you're developing this thing over time. The last question is how, right? That's what we really want to know. Number one, I think minimize is really, really key. Unless you really like to create sort of that themey, like Beauty and the Beast, like castle feeling. Yeah. And that's okay if you do. You can go that opposite direction and it can be breathtaking and you just literally just layer and layer and layer and layer and layer and layer, layer it all on. You're going for more of an old school style with your old stuff and that is totally fine if that's what brings you joy 
if you're trying to go for something that's a little bit more on trend and you're trying to bring those pieces into the, the trendy things that you're seeing on Instagram and you're seeing yeah. some of this on your Pinterest accounts, you might see them in the magazines that are arriving in the mail. If you're trying to go more that route, you may want to think about minimizing what's actually and how much stuff is in the room itself because that sort of paired back look is definitely more on trend. It's good news too, if you're starting from scratch and you're building your home, because yeah. that means you don't need a lot of stuff to be able to get this sort of um, really cool look with your old stuff. So I think you don't need so much. No, yeah, I think so too. I think it can really look current and relevant without, without very much. Okay, so let's say that you're more like us and you like, you lean more towards the modern style and you really like that sort of clean minimal feeling you may want to have let's say white walls mm. and then you have some old stuff but right now i've been obsessing over lime wash stay tuned because it has arrived and i'm going to be testing it out in my bathroom i think that's another way that you can also create an old look with mm. color on the walls you can also think about the pieces themselves is the color relevant to what you're using now I think that you can also segue those items by putting them with a color that feels relevant to you today. So by putting maybe something that has like a, maybe a, a yellow color to it on a blonde piece of wood, it's going to feel a little bit more current than if you put it on something that was a yellow tone. Does that make any sense? No, it totally makes sense. Okay. Yeah. The other way to do it is to also actually sit something really old next to something really modern. <laughs> Example. That's why we keep you here, buddy. <laughs> Can't show you a lot of photos, <laughs> but we'll show you us. No, but this is so true. Like this is, I, this it's is literally the vases. Behind it us. is the vases. It's most yeah. of our house. Yeah. I really like to just put them right next to each other. I think that that for me, that's a mix that I just love. I go back to over and over something really, really rustic and worn sitting next to something really smooth. And I think that you can, have a really clean line next to something that's more ornate and it's just fun. It's, it's magical because your eyes, I remember one time my sister came over for like a Christmas party or something and she literally, I was like, where did she go? Yeah. And she was just wandering the house and she, she was just like, your house is so, it makes me so curious because there were so many different things going on. Yeah. So I think that you can totally think of your own mix. And like I said, if I know for myself that I don't like for things to feel too themed. So if I'm going to have a vintage piece of furniture, it's probably going to be one of the only vintage things because it's such a statement piece when it's a furniture piece. It's, yeah. a, it's a big anchor item. So I know for myself that most of the things surrounding it are going to be more pared back, more minimal and more modern because then I'll like how it feels for me. But that's the fun of all of this is discovery. That's what we help our clients do when we're in person is that we're, we're talking through their mix and trying to get inside their mind and, and try to figure out what really makes them tick and then putting a room together for them. And that, that to me is why I just, I wake up every day and I think I'm the luckiest girl in the world because I get to do this. This is, this is so much fun. Yeah. to get to be on this journey with other people. Okay, so we talked about some of the reasons why you might want to use some of the old stuff, but let's talk about how do you decide whether something is cool, it, cool, right, to you, like it feels relevant, it feels like something that energizes you. To me, that's the definition of cool. Books sometimes can be really, really helpful. So Mr. Uh, Vanna over here yeah. is uh, helping me. He's got a stack of books over here. I was going to show you some books that I really recommend. I think sometimes looking through how other people have put things together is really, really helpful. So I've got a variety here that I think will really be helpful for you. So Axel Vorvort, I, I literally excluded one of his other books because I was like, I need to narrow this down. I'm going to have such a hard time. I don't want to overwhelm you. <laughs> you could buy every single one of his books and they will be so inspiring for how to incorporate your cool old stuff and, and, and your old stuff to make it look cool. He just has such a way mm. of taking things. His original background actually was in antiques and, cool. and, and antiquities. So I think that every one of his books is a 100% win. I bought every single one of them and I cherish them. I love them. But I think that these are really, really inspiring when you're just getting started and you're not sure if, what you want to use. 
I think that uh, Athena Calderona's book, wow, this gorgeous is, book. first of all, of course, her home is just gorgeous and she's so inspiring and I just, I just love her. And I was like, tip over out of the chair, <laughs> like, what? I got you. <laughs> I'm like talking fast because I'm so excited that I'm are. like, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. I've got so much to tell you today. <laughs> but I think that she is just beautiful. And I think that the way that she herself designs is incredible. But you've also got Nate Burkus in there. Why don't you hold this? Yeah, I'll hold this one now. Uh, Nate Burkus and Jeremiah Brent. I think that it's unfair to not include both of them because if you watch them at all, you'll realize that they both work so solidly together. Yet here you've got... Um, this isn't John Deere. This is uh, actually uh, Roman and William, their guild. Oh, okay. They have a shop in New York, which we're going to be hopefully going to in just a couple weeks. Oh, I know. I can't wait. But I think that this book is amazing because, again, it gives you a really good variety of rooms that are full of lots of stuff and then rooms that are really, really pared back. You've got rural settings. You've got modern settings. Your city. Your It's all different kinds of ways. And the point of the book is not to use old stuff, but they gravitated towards people who literally incorporate things that are old, maybe artisanal items, one of a kind vases. Yeah, like some of these stools and stuff that are just like, it's oh, just so they're inspiring. gorgeous. If you don't own this book already, just grab it. If you do, just grab your coffee and just go thumb through it as you think about what, how to incorporate your cool old stuff and maybe what you should be looking for as you shop. And we also have the authentic home and this is more minimal, modern, but they use a lot of old stuff in it. And I think it's so cool because there's a lot of primitive, there's a lot of mid-century, there's a lot of modernist kind of mixed in. Yeah, you wanna just yeah, thumb through? There we go. Yeah. You can see a lot of just different interiors and how you can mix in color. You can have something, look at this one with the oh, old beams. Yeah, gosh, show them that one up close. So that maybe you have a home that has a has a rustic setting, and then how you might want to balance that with modernness. We're gonna get into all that in just a second. But this one is a really good, really sophisticated version of I think how you can really have old stuff. I mean, this is restoring a farmhouse, and I think that that this is not modern farmhouse. This is something no, different. This is not at all. This is like that rustic luxury, sort of that elevated architectural digest kind of feeling. Yeah. And that's what's been inspiring me lately. And I I I got rid of so much of the old stuff and and I couldn't figure out what I was doing for a little while. And I think part of it was because it was sort of this I don't know, a kitschy kind of version mm. of how to use old stuff. And now that I've kind of tapped into this realm, I'm like Oh, I love this. I, I can't stop it. It's I know, so I good. Love it. It's so good. It blows my mind that we get to not only help our clients in person, but we get to be a part of your journey as well. And so I would just encourage you to think about what matters to you and what mix makes you tick. It's like almost rhymes, but I just. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's what geeks me out. It's what gets me up. I just think it's a total blast. When you have those things in your life that are really important to you and they're they're from people that matter to you, they'll they're they're with you and, and you remember them. And then you get to sometimes go places and take things from other people's stories and give them a new life and a new yeah, story. I love that. That's why I think you can't just be one sided on this. We we have to show all sides of the equation because it's so important as you build out your home to create something that you just truly love yeah. and represents your life and your story and encourage your kids and those that you share your home with to, to know what those stories are and why it matters to you. So we've definitely run out of time. I think we could keep just going on and on. <laughs> definitely. Let us know down in the comments if you want more of this and maybe we can start showing you more of how we do incorporate those things and yeah, let us know. And also, please hit subscribe because I can't believe we are about to hit 300,000. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I, I cannot thank you enough for being on this journey with us and allowing us to be on it with you. It's just so cool that we have this platform. I, 
you know, even 20 years ago, we wouldn't have had something oh, like no, this. Oh, no, this is amazing. It's incredible. So amazing. To see that you guys are coming from all over the world, and we're just coming into this community where we're just encouraging each other as we grow our homes and live these beautiful lives. It just, it's incredible. So, all right, grab the coffee. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. We hope that you have a wonderful day. We hope you find encouragement and lots of love in your life. Um, yeah, cheers. All right. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.